very long story how I ended up this way. But believe me, it's made me stronger. And over the time, I've learned to live like this. My bills, instead of paying rent, I basically pay for heat and light, uh, batteries for the fan and the light, and then I pay for propane. I noticed a gentleman downtown, and we're going to take a little walk here. Let's just get another shot at the tent and the Jeep. Take a little walk here as I tell the story around my little plateau up here. There's the house over there, through the trees. I have permission from those nice people to live up here. And uh, the former tenants that used to live over there, though, they did have a tent over here, which is sort of behind my tent. But they had taken their tent with them. They left all kinds of trash here. A Budweiser sign was hanging on the trees. Beer bottles and beer cans, I can't have that. I don't drink. <laughs> the majority of homeless people I've run into up here who are drinkers. But in any event, I cleaned this area up really good, so it looks really nice. They still got their fire pit there I left alone. I won't be using it because I cook on my grill. So, And you can still see the tent from here. This is my plateau area. This is above, about 20 feet above the ground up here. And it's far enough away from the cars and the main roads. You can see the cars go by every now and then. Or at night, even when my tent is lit up, you can't really see it because the ridge kind of covers it. I would have located it over there where theirs was. But then the risk of being spotted and having undesirables coming by. I've had enough of that for a while. In the last uh, year alone, I went through an experience of my own up here. Well, basically... I ended up this way as I moved up here thinking I could live with the person I'm with but it turned out that uh, I couldn't stay there my she lives in some kind of a housing setting where you can only allow so many people per household so and being that she didn't get evicted I said I'll leave because they threatened eviction on her so I decided to go on my own and is the Jeep again where I park it. And here's the road that comes in. Now during the winter I'm going to have to park it right there on the ground. Because that way I don't have to worry about four wheeling up this way. Through that little 25 yards of road there. And you can see the tent again. And if you look above. It's very cool out here. It's very very cool. It stays very cool. That's amazing because of the fact that the... Uh, rest of the town could be all hot and muggy a nice breeze blows through here I purposely faced the tent to the east and west because during the winter the, the winds are going to be coming out of that north and northwest and there are no openings on this tent now this tent was damaged here and another spar in the back there which I got connectors for thanks to Walmart and there they had some Coleman rods too that actually fit this tent that I'm adapting from a Coleman tent. And I'm putting the connectors in and I've made it stronger. It was like brand new. But if you look at the rain fly in this, it goes all the way down. Once the snow creeps up, it'll seal that. There's two layers. And there's only four openings. You have this one. You have the back one. You have the two skylights, which let in air from underneath and around the tent. As you can see, there's a double layer here. So this tent is kind of warm. It would be nice and warm in the winter. Especially with that new grill I got now. This grill I got from a thing called FreeCycle. Something on the internet. They have a free cycle in every town. And you post what you want and need. And people give away stuff. Even cars and trucks. I'm, I'm amazed at what they give away. Uh, cell phones. So I asked for a grill. And next thing you know I got a nice grill. For the tent. And she's a 20,000 BTU. So that will be more than enough power for this thing. I'm going to have to run it on low heat. It is very safe to use the grill inside of this tent I've used it before with my previous tent which was a something I, f I found this Coleman tent kind of clobbered in the trees and I fixed it up and I used it for about oh about eight months until the last December 
I had a tarp over it at one point, and uh, as my snow deflector, I made a little V-shape, and I used it, and it worked successfully, but then after that, I couldn't keep up with the snow pounding it daily when I wasn't there. Eventually, it did collapse, and I had one time a snowblower, which blew a trail for me so this Jeep could get in and out and get me to my half-collapsed tent, and it was over in Guilford, which is... Not more than a half a mile from here. I'll do an episode on each of these places. But this is my main place. Where I'm shooting the video now. Where I currently live. And like I said, it's not a bad life. I have a place to shower. I have a place to wash. But I'm also thinking of erecting a shower tent. And if you look over in the distance. Well, you can't see it with this. But there's a bypass highway out there. And it goes to Walmart. And that's where I get all my stuff at. And then if I go the other way and follow the dirt road, well, then I could go downtown and go shopping. Grocery stores, uh, Cumberland Farms. Amazing how I'm surviving. But it's making me stronger. I still have my, um, my heart condition. But actually, this is helping me out being out here in nature. And it's making a better man out of me. It's just beautiful here. I love it. The peace of mind you get. And you just see the setting here. If you see it in the view. Just what I'm into. Now. I'm going to be flying my helicopters through here. Uh, starting next month. I got two more coming in. From China. Very cheap. It's not going to break my budget. But you know you can only live on so much. I tried to get an apartment. He really can't. He can't afford an apartment on $674 a month. That's what I make in Social Security. You really, can, you can, really can't live on that. And I tried the rooming house. I'd never heard of him until I moved up here. But it's horrible. You, you share the bathroom with the entire building. And it's like you're waiting. Somebody's banging on the door. How long are you going to be in there? Well, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I decided to come out here and opt it on my own. I've already went through a couple of snowstorms, uh, snow, snowy winters up here, and believe me, it goes up to your knees, and even above that, to your waist. And what I'm thinking of getting, being I'm so close to the road, the proximity to the road is a snow wovel, which is a shovel on a giant wheel, and being it's not gas powered, I don't have to worry about any mechanical failures. The last um, snow blower I got. Believe it or not, came on Craigslist. I spent $100 on it. The man guaranteed the oil was changed. And it would last another season. I ran this for two days and eight hours of usage. Then it seized up on me. And I wonder why. I took the dipstick out. There's this much of oil in there. And it was black and burnt. So that's the last of that. You know, whenever you buy something from Craigslist or used or anything like that, make sure you check the oil if it's mechanical. I highly advise that, especially on Craigslist. Actually, all the sites, eBay, I don't care where you get it from, Amazon. You buy a snowblower or anything like a lawnmower or anything like that, check the oil. Make sure it's not this much in there and it's black. I don't care if the owner tells you and sells you on it. The snowblower worked good, but it didn't have the oil and it was never changed. Well, it's another experience I chalked up.